uh, just a quick recap of what we are done till now. Okay, maybe instead of going through the notepad, I'll just try to show you the system itself. So we uh, started the credit management component in SAP S4 HANA. We understood that in SAP S4 HANA, there is only one component which supports the features of credit management. In ECC, there were two options. You can use SDR credit management or you can use SSCM credit management. But in S4 HANA, the old SDR credit management is no more available and it is only possible to do the credit management using FSCM component. And then we have done some configurations and some, uh, we also try to create master data. We have also done some transactions. So just a quick recap of what configurations we need to do. So all the configurations related to credit management is now available within financial supply chain management. Okay, so there's no uh, confusion that earlier there was something in sales and distribution that is no more available, right? So in financial supply chain management, you will be able to see the component uh, folder called as credit management and all the configurations is available here. So if you go to credit management component, here you will be able to see this credit risk monitoring. Okay, in this one, there are a few important things that we have seen. For example, I explained you what is credit segment. So in ECC, if you are using old credit management, if you want to use uh, this credit management component, the most important thing was credit control area. So if you want to use credit, credit management, you definitely need a credit control area. Even in S4 HANA, same thing applies. Even in S4 HANA, if you want to use credit management, you have to create a credit control area, but that is not enough. In addition to credit control area, you also need to create a credit segment. Okay, so credit segment is the highest node within FSCM credit management. Okay, so in our case, we have created a credit segment with name FSCM, right? So this is the credit segment that we created. And then other important things here, we have seen the risk classes. Okay, so based on the different customers, there can be some customers who are good customers, they are paying on time. There are some other customers who are delaying the payment and there are some third type of customers who are not paying at all. They have a very bad credit rating in the market. Right, so based on the situation, you can, whenever you are creating a customer master, you can tell the system how this customer is in terms of the credit, whether he is at low risk, which means he'll be paying on time, or maybe he is at very high risk, which means uh, we should not go ahead and do any business with this particular customer. Right, so these are the default risk classes which are pre-delivered by SAP. Okay, if you want to adjust according to your own scenario, you can definitely remove or you can add your own uh, risk classes here. Okay, and then most important configurations we are seen under the integration with AR and integration with ST. So we are still not seeing anything related to integration with AR, but we are seeing all the relevant things within integration with sales and distribution. So if I open this, we understood uh, to assign the credit control area to our credit segment. So we are using one is to one in our case. We created a credit segment FSCM. We assigned it to credit control area FSCM, and that credit control area is assigned to our company code as FSCM, right? So even the sales area, we assign the sales area to our credit control area, and from these two important things, which sales order type is relevant to credit management? So if you remember, we discussed these are the different order types. Whenever you create a sales order, you need to specify the sales order type. So here, normally we use the standard order OR. Okay, so for OR, we have seen all the scenarios. We have activated the credit management. Okay, so if I keep it blank, then from the sales point of view, credit management is not by default active. It means whenever you do any sales order creation or delivery or billing, system will not stop you, even if there is no credit limit available. Right, but if I keep this D, this means automatic control is in place. Each and every sales order, delivery, billing will go through the credit chip. Okay, we also discussed previously in ECC, there was an option to use A, B, and C, which are related to simple credit checks. The simple credit checks are no more available in s hana It can only support you either no credit check or if you want to use the credit check, it is only supported as B. Right? And then, Similar to the order type, even the uh, 
line items. So if you go to define active receivables for item category, in our case, we have used the item category TAN, which is again for the standard item. And here also, we activated the credit management. We have asked the system to perform the credit check whenever we are using item category TAN, which is a standard item category. Okay. And then last one is define automatic credit control. So this is the most important thing. If you see here, I created this line. If you double click on this. So for our credit control area, if we assign the risk class to the customer, as I told you, each and every customer, we need to assign to the risk class. We already understood how to create a customer in s hana We have to create it with the BP. So within the BP, if you just go to your customer master, so this was a customer tag we created. Click on start, double click here. Okay, and if you go to role UKM triple zero, this is a role which is related to credit management. So in this particular role, you will be able to see in the general data tab, within general data, you have to go to this credit profile, and here you'll be able to assign the risk class to your customer. So we are telling the system that this particular business partner is at high risk, right? And based on this category, based on this risk class, we want the system how to behave whenever there is no credit in place. Okay, so if you go to automatic credit control, what we are telling the system is for this type of customers who fall under this, this category, credit management is active, and the reaction would be issue the warning message. C means issue the warning message, D means issue the error message. Right, so based on this, whenever you try to create a sales order now in the system, if I go to transaction VA01 to create a sales order, you can see my order type is OR. I will just try to copy it from the order which we already created. Let's go with this one. So copy. You can see order type was OR and my line item category is tab. So it is applicable for both order also and line item also. Okay, and that is the reason if I try to save it now. This is a mandatory field, so I'm just entering this. Let's try to save it now. So what you are able to see here is, there is a message related to credit check. System is performing the credit check. And what system is identified is, for this particular business partner, the credit limit is only 15,000 USD. But this customer has already exceeded by 61,000 USD. If you go ahead with this order, you will be exceeding it for more than 61,000. Okay, let's go and see how much is the total utilization. So you can go to the business partner master data in the credit segment data. So you can see limit is 15,000, but already this customer has utilized 60,000. So if I continue with this current order, it will even go beyond that value. Okay, and that is the reason system is not giving me error. See, it is not an error. System is not stopping me. I'm able to create a save sort because it is not showing in bracket unable to save. If you are getting this message unable to save in the bracket, this means that you are getting the error message and system will not allow you to go further. Right? In this case, if I just press enter, you'll be able to see that the order has been created. Okay, which means if you again go to the organization, let's refresh this, you'll be able to see this exposure has been increased whatever the value of the order. I think the order value was only 1,000. So it should be 61,000 now. Okay, so this is our customer. Let's double click here. Uh, no, it is 76,000 now. So I think the order value was 16,000. Let's go and see. So sales order value display. What is the value of this order? Let's double click here and go to the conditions. Yeah, you can see the value is 16,000. That is the reason order is showing you, or the credit exposure is showing you 76,000. If you want to know how, how this 76,000, just click on this, and it will tell you there are open orders of 64,000, and there are also another open orders of 12,000. These are two different customers. I'll explain. You don't worry about this one. Just go with this one as of now. See what is happening. So total credit exposure to this customer is 64,000. Right? If I double click, it will tell me which orders. Order wise, it will show you 
16, 16, 16, 16. There are four orders with 16,000 commitment. Okay, any questions as of now? This is what we discussed till now. What we will discuss today is we will try to understand other functionalities of credit management, which is how to automatically determine this credit limit. In our case, we entered this amount manually. Right, we created this business partner and we entered this 15,000 to this customer. But if I want this to be derived automatically, not only this, if I also want to derive this score automatically. Okay, these two things we will understand now. How to automatically derive the score and how to automatically derive the credit limit of a particular business partner. Vikram, one question. Uh, you created that uh, this class uh, D, right? So, mm -hmm. um, can you, you will be able to create uh, rules also for other classes also, right? Yes, yes, yes. I only define rule for D, but if I want to set up the rules for C, A, B, C, definitely I need to create an automatic credit control for those classes also. But uh, for one particular thing, can you only one have one entry or you can have multiple entries also? Uh, for one means, for one risk for class. One one yeah no if we go back to this configuration one step yeah i can copy it i can go to this one and i can go with c oh and then you can save it as a new entry yes yes, yes definitely we, if we are if we are having four different risk classes or five different risk classes that many number of entries we have to create it here so we can mention all maintain all those risk classes and automatic control will be enabled for all those classes Yes, exactly. So we can say for D, we have said warning message, but let's right. say for E, we will say no, it is not warning, it is a like error itself. Error so we can go for D. Yes. Perfect. Okay. Thank okay. If you Perfect. just try to save, you will be able to see that multiple entries are allowed for a single credit control area. So if I see, you can see for E also and D also. Correct. Correct. Got it. Got it. Got it. So, so if the risk class of the customer is D, yeah. then it will issue the warning message. But if it is E, it will, it will issue the error message. And also within D, also you have another entry, right? So you, it looks like there's a for a different rule. No, this is not rule. Yeah. This is this is at the uh, credit group level, which means at what level you will perform the credit check. So there are three levels. If you remember, we discussed last time. Uh, yeah. The check will be performed either at the sales order level or at the delivery level or at the position. Sure. These are the three yeah. checks. But there's one more entry I can see above, FSCMD. What is that entry? That is blank. You can see. This is actually wrongly created. So okay. I may so need yeah, to sure. remove it. Yes. Normally, we don't create it blank. Blank will okay. not work at all. Yeah, yeah. Good, good. Thank you. Now, got it. Clear. Hi, uh, hi. Just to explain. Yeah. Uh, there is one option item check. Could you please go inside? Uh, the FCM, uh, there is one tick item check. So, when uh, we will use this uh, option, uh, in which scenario we will activate this? Item check. Okay, let's see. Normally, I don't use this, but let's see. If I go with this one. Indicate letter system carry out the check not only when you save the document, but already when you enter single item. Item generate one means uh, just I'm guessing in in my sales order there are ten uh, line items and I want uh, mm -hmm. uh, only one or two line item systems should not check so in that scenario we'll activate because as per the message which is saying. Just give me a minute. Let me try to understand. Indicate that the system carried out the credit check not only when you save the document, but already when you oh okay, okay. Yeah. So what it is saying is see currently what is happening, whenever you are creating the sales order, right? I created a sales order, let's say as you said, I enter the tail lines here. I entered one line currently. Let it go back. Okay, so in our case, if I go to this order, we only entered one line. Right? But as soon as we entered the line, system has not performed the credit check. The credit check was performed when I tried to save the order. So if I have multiple lines here, 
let's say i am entering first line amount is 16000 that is within credit but i am entering second line let's say the amount is 5000 it is going beyond the limit then the system will throw the error message there itself instead of clicking on save here itself at the line at the time of entry itself system will throw the error message let's try to activate it yeah. okay so let's go with this one save and now let's try to create a save sort so e01 enter i have to enter this this time i cannot copy because if i'm copying the item is coming automatically so payment term input term is this material quantity and let's try to enter plant and amount which place enter here itself it is not performed as of now but according to that it was looking like this okay let's try to i think we saved it vikram don't save it just a second are you saving no no i'm not saving okay so what you can do uh you keep increasing the line items and when at the line item level when it will exceed then only it will give you the error that kind of function okay so you want me to okay you want add, me to add, add another line in that case yes 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 okay that's the feature no but here also it is not stopping that but still you are within the limit isn't it condition is missing it's saying prr no 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 this is this is this is already outside limit this customer is already more than 500 times utilization yeah yeah maybe i need to after i change maybe let's go try to do the log off sometimes it takes time to update the tables in the background Okay, let's try to go to V A zero one. This is my order type. Enter. We are done for E. I think this may be the problem. We have to do this for D. In our case, it is D. That might be the issue. It's yeah, D, correct. You're right. Yeah, yeah. We assign to D. Yeah, here itself it should throw error now. So this is just to make sure that if there are multiple lines, the user will enter all the lines, and then only will come to know. Oh, I entered ten lines, and now it is throwing error. Instead of that, when the line is entered there itself, uh, if it is it's showing the message, that would be more comfortable for the end user. Let's try. Yes, exactly. So what is happening now is at the time of line itself, we are getting this error instead of trying to save it. Okay, Vikram. Thank you very Good. much. But, but Vikram, if uh, the credit yeah. credit limit has already exceeded for this customer, imagine uh, credit limit is not exceeded, and once you are 
going to enter mm -hmm. the fifth line, fifth line, and then the credit limit is exceeding. Mm -hmm. But here, in your case, the error will come to the fifth line. Correct. That's the beauty of this one. Yeah. Right. 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 Yes. Yeah. So it That's is like, uh, as, yeah. So let's say you have the limit of ten thousand. The first line that you are creating is eight thousand, and second line, as soon as you enter the amount which is going beyond ten thousand, that line will throw the error. It will not throw the error on the first line. It will throw the error only when the amount is exceeded, the credit limit. Indeed. Uh -huh. Vikram, I, I have one quick question here about the risk class. Uh, when we we have already seen the risk class A, B, C, and D, they were just scoring at right hand side. If you remember, in the config, they just scoring. Uh, score you are talking about? Yeah, yeah. So yeah, yeah. Kunal, I am coming to that. That is actually the automatic score calculation, which is our next topic. Okay, that's fine. Thank yeah. you. So as of now, what we are doing is we are not using scoring. We just manually entered the credit limit for this customer, 15,000. But if you want to derive that credit limit automatically based on some formulas, based on some logics, that we can do based on the score calculation and the limit calculation. But still, so there is some, is, some score is coming. So is it a default by SAP? Or that, by SAP. that should be blank. No, no, no. That comes default by SAP. Whenever you work on any new system, by default, yeah. this score will come. So you are talking about this credit management, this monitoring, master data, and this class. This is you are talking about, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because this is based on yeah. different factor that we need to consider. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yes, yes, yes. This is our next topic. Don't worry about this. We will talk about this now. Thank you very much. Thanks. Okay. So now what we will do is we will talk about the advanced features. Whatever features we discussed till now, this was available in SDER credit management also. Okay, so now the first advanced feature is, let's take a scenario. Instead of just doing the configuration, if you properly take a scenario, that will make more sense. So in your company, the policy is whenever a new customer is registered, Okay, whenever a new customer is registered, the policy is step number one, send the details to credit rating agencies. Okay, let's say this is our first step. In the second step, you will say, it's a receive the file, receive the file from credit rating agencies. Okay, in this case, let's take a proper example. Let's say this agency one. So it can be any agency, whatever name, Crystal, Sibyl, or maybe uh, in other countries, there may be some other agencies which are responsible to provide the credit ratings. So you send the file to the credit rating agency. They provide you the ratings. And let's assume these ratings are based on, like again, different companies will be having different ratings. So for example, one credit rating agency will say A1. Okay, let's say they have three categories, or maybe let's keep it simple. Let's say they will say A, B, and C. These are the three categories. A means uh, you can say in my system I want to provide, or let's take the same thing A, B, C, D, and E, whatever we are using in our SAP system. Let's say your vendor, your credit rating agency, is providing you the ratings based on these categories A, B, C, D, and E. So A means good customer whose rating rating is very good okay so maybe you can say very good b means just good c means okay d means maybe uh, bad bad maybe i think that is not a right thing but uh he is bad in terms of the making the payments and let's say this is very bad so these are the ratings which you just think about this scenario if you're not worked on the credit management till now. I'll take a very simple example. Even we, whenever we apply for home loan or whenever we apply for any personal loan, what exactly, based on what we get this loan amount. Okay, so what this loan companies do is they will be sending your data to the agencies. 
right? They will be sending this data to the agencies, and agencies will be giving us the ratings. So you must be knowing the credit score of more than 750 is good. If it is considered good, if it is less, then they will ask you to produce some more documents, and they will be not able to give you the amount that you are looking for. So these ratings are very important. In order to make sure that your ratings are good, you need to pay on time. So if the customer is not paying on time, so this credit rating agency will give you the ratings like D and E, which is very bad. And maybe your company can decide if that is the rating, then we will not be able to give any discount, to, sorry, any credit to this customer. Right? So let's say these are the five ratings which your credit rating agency has provided to you. Now, based on these ratings, you want to convert it into the scores. Let's say an SAP system, we don't worry about ratings. We want to give the score to the customer. So we can say, okay, whenever a customer is getting the maybe the rating E, then we'll be only able to give him 20 points. Okay, if he's getting more than, uh, if he's getting the D rating, then maybe we can give him 40 points. If it is C, we'll be able to give him 60 points. Or maybe even instead of that, I will say like this range, 1 to 20. So it is 0, 1 to 20. Okay, if it is bad, if you are getting these ratings from our rating agencies, so it would be 21 to 40, 41 to 60, 61 to 80, and last one is 81 to now, why there is a range? The range is provided maybe apart from the ratings, you also want to consider other factors. Okay, you also want to consider other factors when you are giving the ratings to the or whenever you are providing the score to your customers. Maybe the again the second criteria would be what is the level of this customer? Like if it is a small customer or a medium customer. So if you remember, even in the business partner master data, whenever you are creating any customer, there is one field. Okay, so if you go to credit segment data, which means you came triple zero. Okay, in the credit profile, just assume it is not necessary. It can be any field based on any field you want to provide the ratings. So this is a credit group. So whether it is a corporate or it is a small or medium customer or it is a subsidiary of any big customer. So there are different categories. So let's say based on this category, you want to provide these scores from 1 to 20. So 20 you will be providing only if he is a corporate. This customer is a big corporate. But if it is a small or medium enterprise, then you want to give only 10 or 15 years. So that logic you can build based on the formulas which are provided to you by SAP. Okay, so first we will understand the formulas to calculate the score. And then we will understand based on the score, how we can assign the limit to the customer. Okay, so what is happening here? Let's try to understand the standard formula first. See what is happening here. As soon as I created a customer, system is automatically calculating the score of 22. If I want to know how the score of 22 got determined, okay, let's go to the change mode and try to see this. This is calculated with formula and click on this, this will give you the information on formula. So I think that tick is not indicated here. I'll show you where exactly this can be configured from. If you click on this, this will give you the complete calculation. Okay, so how, based on what configuration system is determining this score. So this score is totally based on this rule that you assigned. This rule that you assigned, that is the reason when we discussed about this screen earlier, I told you don't worry about these rules, don't worry about the score. Just worry about the risk class, shaking rule, and again, don't worry about this. So this credit group score rules, we will understand now. We already understood what is risk class, and we already understood what is shake rule. So now let's go to this rules in the configuration. Let's try to understand what is rules, and based on these rules, how the score is calculated. Okay, so let's go to SPR. RMG. Financial supply chain management, credit management. Okay, in this one, we will go to credit limit. 
uh, yeah, let's see here. No, just give me master data. Yeah, here you can see create rules for scoring and credit limit calculations. Okay, let's open this. So, which rule we are using? Just go to your business partner master data. We are using B2P dash exist. This is a rule that we are using. And let's try to see the configuration for this rule B2P that exists first one itself. Okay, for this particular rule, if I double click on score, you can see for this particular rule, we are using this formula score underscore B2B. Okay, which is a standard formula which is provided by SAP. And whatever score it will calculate, it will be valid for 365 days. So if you see here, see whatever was calculated. I think we calculated this on 16th May 2020 last week. No, sorry. I think it is again calculated. Just now we have clicked on calculated formula. So it is showing you today's date plus 365 days. So whatever score has been calculated, by default, this score will be applicable for 365 days. If you change it here, if you tell the system, no, I don't want this for 365 days. I only want for this two months. You just come here and you make it 60. Okay, now what is this formula? What exactly is this formula? Just click on this display formula. It will show you how these settings are being calculated. So I think let's click on this and click on display formula. So this is a formula. You can see all the logics are written here. What is happening is based on various different factors, system is calculating the formula. Okay, but before that, let me just go back and try to Uh, I just want to activate this is default okay the, here you can click on the default which means it will be the default so it will not ask you whenever you create a new business partner by default this rating procedure will be or this rule will be active okay let's double click here let's go to score and Trace is active, but still it is not showing. When we say trace is active, this means we will be able to click on this button and it will tell us how the system has calculated that value. Okay, let's try to do it once again. If I go to transaction GP and for this particular customer, let's say start, double click. It is disabled. Information on formula it is showing disabled. Let me check why exactly it is showing. Disabled normally if this tick is active, this means trace is active. When we say trace is active, this means system will be able to show you how the system was able to calculate this 22. So it will clearly tell you what are the conditions being considered in the background. Okay, but let's now see the formula and try to understand the detail. So in this formula, there are various different criteria. You can see there are a lot of criteria. Number one is whether it is a negative customer. What do you mean by negative customer? There is a config, there is a master data where you can go and you can make a particular customer as a blacklisted, negative, or whitelisted customer. Okay, how you can go to accounting, financial accounting, sorry, financial supply chain management, obviously in credit management, in master data you can see negative and premium customer list. So if I double click here and click on new entry, if I just tell the system that this business partner that we are talking about, okay, let me copy this. Okay, I came to know that this customer has done some fraud, for example. Okay, so I want to come here and I want to tell the system that this is a blacklisted customer. Okay, just click on save. Now what will happen, just see. if I go to this organization as of now, the calculation score is showing 22. Let's try to calculate once again. You can see score has become zero. Why this score has become zero? Because the first step itself, in the first step itself, system is taking whether it is a negative customer. And if it is a negative customer, then it will go to the true. If you go to true, you can see score equal to zero. 
it will not go further only it will stop here itself system will just check whether this customer is negative if true zero no need to go further if it is not true it will go to the second step in the second step it is asking whether this is a premium customer which means if it is a whitelist customer or not right so again if you go here and instead of black if you just make it white and try to save it okay what will happen just go and see the formula first so if it is a white customer then the score is 100 irrespective of the other factors right so if i go to my customer master once again and try to click on this formula uh, it is showing error in rule there is some error in the rule that we created let's see no, there is still some error so maybe we need to first check what is wrong have we saved this already yes this was already saved let's go back and try to Okay, it is between 22. Let's try to calculate. Now there is some error. So which means this formula, this rule that we are checking, the rule that we are checking, there is some problem with this particular rule. You will see what is that problem. So in short, the second check is it will check whether the customer is a premium customer or not. If true, then under it. If not true, then it is going for some exit. You can see there is termination of formula. Again, if you go out, no, sorry, see what is happening. That is the reason we are getting this error. So first system is checking whether the customer is a premium customer or not. In the same screen, system is trying to do some other calculation. It is not false. Even in the true itself, it is trying to do some calculation which is failing. And that is the reason we are getting that particular error no worries as of now i'm closing this let's go to the third one foreclosure foreclosure insolvency these are all what these are kind of bankrupted customers so if you came to know that this customer is bankrupted and you don't want to enter into the negative what you can also do is in the business partner master data itself if you go to credit worthiness data see this this is where you can click on foreclosure. Okay, and the date of foreclosure. This is where you can click on bankrupted. If a customer is bankrupted. So what, what you are able to do here is there are multiple different ways in which based on this fields, system will be able to calculate the score. So again, let's go to the formula. If it is foreclosure, then what will happen? Again, the score will become zero. If it is insolvent, insolvent means bankrupted. If this bankrupted indicator is on, okay, again, the score will become zero. So like this, there are various different steps in short. Okay, so now coming to the external rating. So first four parameters, if you see, one, two, three, and four, this is just to give 100 or zero. Okay, only for premium customer, it is 100. If it is negative customer, if it is foreclosure customer, if it is bankrupted customer, then you directly want to provide the rating as zero. Only after that, system is considering the external rating. Okay, what is external rating? This that we calculated. So based on the external rating, let's see what are the different options. So if the external rating is available, then based on the result, whatever result you got, it is performing some calculation. We will go into the details of this calculation. As of now, just remember what is happening is based on some external ratings, system is trying to perform the calculation and come up with the score. It is not stopping here itself. It is again going further and it is taking what is the legal form, whether it is a company or the partnership firm or it is an individual firm. It is also checking the industry so these are the different fields which you can enter here in the business partner master data itself. Okay, so if you go to uh, the general customer master data, 